This is what we're gonna build together in this video together in four steps. It's only gonna involve one npm package and it's gonna look great and it has a lot of use cases. If you're making a documentation website this might look amazing to whoever is viewing the website. If you have a personal portfolio in which you involve code then this would be a great addition to that portfolio. It's very lightweight. It looks really good and all the syntax highlighting is done for us. You don't need to worry about it. It's a great thing. So let's learn how to build it together. All right, step one, we want to initialize a new React project. And in my case, that's going to be with Tailwind and also with TypeScript. You can do whatever you want. Listen, I don't care. I'm not your father. As long as you set up a React project, you're golden and everything is going to be all right. Step two, we want to install a dependency called Prism React Renderer. And what that's going to do for us essentially it takes care of all the syntax highlighting for us. So we don't need to worry about any of that. All the syntax highlighting is done. Um, you just need to put in which language the code that you want the syntax highlighting done for is. In our case, that's going to be TypeScript, but we're going to get to that later. And I forgot to say, it only involves two components. First one being the app component. And we are going to get started in the app component with the code that we want animated. Now, you don't have to animate the code. Um, animating is as easy as passing one prop to the component that we're going to create together that's going to render the code saying animate true or if you don't pass that prop the code is not going to be animated it's going to be just static by default it's still going to look really good though because we have a default theme that we also get from the npm package that we installed in step two so let's start with the code that we want animated. In my case, that's gonna be an import first and then just, you know, some, some random JavaScript that kinda looks good if you view it in the uh, code editor on the front end. It has no semantic meaning at all, but in here you would put the code that you want animated. But be careful, indentation matters. The indentation here is actually gonna be reflected in the component later on, so just keep that in mind. Now, in my case, I'm also going to initialize one state that allows us to click a button and then essentially show code depending on that state. But that is totally optional. You don't have to do that. Um, this is where your logic would go if you want specific one for code handling. But if you want the same effect as I showed you in the beginning, just keep following along, initialize that state. And whenever we click the button, we basically increment that state by one. So we can then uh, decide which code to show depending on where the state is. And also two utility functions, but they're very simple. Let's get to the JSX. We want one div, um, just some very basic styling in Tailwind. We want a button and that button will be used to increment the state so we can display code uh, depending on the state. And then also we want one more div that handles all the code and in there we're going to actually put the code components that don't exist yet. But we're going to create them together and they're going to look really dope. For the code components, uh, before we pass anything to them, we want to define the components so it actually makes sense and we know what we even need to pass into them. And we want seven props to the code, but most of them being optional. So there's not going to be a huge ordeal of having to pass a lot of props to be able to render this. No, nope. this component is actually going to be really reusable. So most importantly, we want the code, right? That's going to be a string. That's going to be what we've already defined in the app component. Then we want to determine whether we want to show this code or not. And those are the only two um, props that we demand for this component to be rendered. And then everything else is optional. So we have a max height that we can use if we use multiple lines of code to actually maintain that height, because otherwise it would look a bit weird. I'm going to get to that later. Then we also want the animated property. And so, as I mentioned earlier, animating this is as easy as passing the prop animated true, and everything else is going to be handled by the reusable component, which is going to be amazing. And then two more props that are very optional and the use cases are very sparse. But just for some edge cases, we probably still want them in there. Okay, in this component, first, let's determine which text we want to show initially. Because even if we decide to change the text later, we still need to know what to show at the beginning. And to change the text later, we're also subsequently going to initialize a state that we can then set, which is going to contain the code that will be shown um, to the user. Now let's get to the animation. We are not going to use any package for that. It's as easy as having a use effect in which we're going to use a set timeout. And if we want an animation delay, we're going to delay that timeout by that animation delay. And otherwise we'll just use 150 milliseconds. And then we want to handle the animation. And we do that by iterating through every letter, setting an interval and then adding to the uh, text state that we just set to also display the letter that we've just iterated through. Now remember the new text to write edge case prop that we passed 
pass in the beginning of the code component. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing for that. It's pretty boring code. It is the same principle that we're going to apply to that. So just a use effect with a set timeout and set interval. Nothing really changed. It's really boring, so I'm not going to get into it. Essentially, what it does, though, is it handles the exact same animation if we want to add text later on to the same code component. And then finally, we have one more step to go, and that is having, you know, the actual com component that is rendered to the user, which is a big part. We don't want to forget about that. And for that, we're going to use the dependency we've installed at the beginning, which is going to make it super simple. We can pass up the default props that we also import from it, so we don't need to worry about that at all. Now, we also want to enter the code. That is going to be the text state that we're keeping that is initialized as the initial text. And then also we want the language. In our case, that's going to be TSX but you could enter whatever language you want, depending on which code your component will contain. And then really handy, we also get access to a default theme that we can import that we can just pass to this component and it's going to look good by default. Now, this component exposes a bunch of stuff to us. Essentially, what we care about most are these two functions right here that we can use to render the lines and then also to render each word for every line later on. But first off, let's define the pre. Um, and yes, we're doing correct semantic HTML here. If you want code in your HTML, we are going to display that in a pre and not just in a div or anything. Let's apply some basic styling to that, nothing special. And then let's get into how to create the lines and the words for each line. Let us initialize a div first and to determine which props should be passed to that div, we can use the function that is exposed to us by the highlight component. That is really handy. So we can literally just spread in everything that gets returned by that function and have that in the div as the props. And now the final thing that we need to do is go through every line and determine what should be shown in that line. And we're done. It is as easy as that. So the component knows what it should display based on the state that we put into it, which also allows us to actually change that state later on. If you want to add text later that is being animated and then also shown in the highlight component. So a lot of the logic that we would normally need to worry about implementing this ourselves is actually handled by the NPM library. It's pretty lightweight. It's very useful. And that's why I think it's a great use case for the library in this scenario. And that is all we need to do now, congratulations. You have a beautifully animated code component that you can use in your portfolio or wherever. Now, I did not come up with this myself. I want to make a quick disclaimer here. This was from a project that exploded on the React Reddit. They posted their website and I visited it and thought this effect was really neat and they open sourced that project. I'm gonna link the original GitHub repo in the description. That is where I got it from. Credit where credit is due, great work and thank you for open sourcing it. Okay, that's all I want to share. Uh, congratulations again on your cool component. I hope you're um, doing cool stuff with it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Until then, have a good one and bye-bye.